that sometimes you have to input data, a huge amount of data. How to do that? Of course, uh, the first question is what is the format of the data that you are given? So you go to the Regional Protection Agency, what we call the ARPA, you go to uh, an observatory, an observatory of Bolivar, and they give you data. First question, what is the format of the data? The format may be arbitrary, but there is a format that is mostly used that is considered to be universal or more or less universal, which is the ASCII format or text format. So do you know what it means, text file, ASCII file? It suffices one of the two terms. Do you know what is a text file? Okay, you? No? Ah, you know it. Do you know what is a text file? No. Okay, what about you? Everybody there? Okay. Let me record what is a text file. Text file is a format that is like a, we would say in Italian primitivo, it means a very basic one, which, is, which has the advantage of being readable by several platforms. The disadvantage is that it occupies quite a lot of space in terms of dimension of the file. The text, it is the format that you get from Notepad in Windows. So in Windows Notepad, in other operating systems, different programs, but if you open Notepad in Windows and you write something and save, this is the text format. Okay? And usually when you are given the data, people tell you, like, it is in text format or it is in ASCII, they are synonyms, okay? The text format cannot contain any formatting. So, if you go to Word and save, it doesn't save in text format. It saves in another format that includes formatting, like bold, font size, etc. The text format is very basic. And therefore, when you get some data, you may ask for the text format because it's, you are sure that you can upload it in whatever platform and they typically will tell you it's not in text but you can export it, you can convert it, you can do something because some have uh, give data with uh, database format like MySQL, like uh, Microsoft Access, etc. and then you need to go into the program and export in text if you want the text format. The moral of the story is that if you want to import the data in Excel, for instance, there are some formats that you can use. Access is compatible with Excel. Text is, of course, compatible with Excel. CSV, another format that you may have heard of, is compatible with Excel. With R, you need a text format. So, if you are given the data in a text format, this is fine. If you are given the data in another format, you need to convert it. So, let's assume that you are given the data in a text format, because this is almost always possible. Even from Excel, you can export in text. So, let's create a file with data in text format. So let's open Notepad. Everybody of you uses Windows, but you, but you can use Windows next time. So let me open the Notepad and let's create this file. So, access source, I think it's here. Notepad, it's here. Now, let me just write numbers here, like 10, 12, 2, 4, 7, 9, 0, whatever, it doesn't matter, even if they are different from mine, no problem. So I wrote here like a uh, reduced number of numbers, but you may have like 1 million, okay. And then let's save, file, save. Okay, usually what do we do when we save a file? First of all, look at the extension that is proposed, T 
txt, which is an abbreviation for text. Okay? Let's say file, my file. And uh, where should we save it? Let's save in documents, for instance, whatever. It may be in the desktop, but let, let's do the same thing altogether. Let's, let's select documents. Okay? Okay, save. Okay, now we can close Notepad. Now the question is how to import the text file in R. Okay, first the function is scan. What is the argument of scan? There is only one required argument. Keep in mind, in general, there are some functions in R, like ls, that don't require any argument. There are optional arguments, but not required argument. ls, I open and close parentheses. Most of the functions have required and optional arguments. Scan has a required argument, which is the name of the file. Okay, let's try to make this attempt. Let's try to write my file, or let's try to write my and then the tab. Very good. He found it. Okay, let's close. And that's it. Did you succeed? Did you try? Try and let me know if you succeed. Did you try? And fine? Okay, good. That's all good. It doesn't work, it doesn't work. I saved the whole list of what is good. Fine or found? No, because it's on the desk. It is on the desktop. Yeah, can you please try to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to open it on the desktop and save in documents? But uh, uh, leave a copy of the desktop because this is the next step. No, 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 but we have to put it in documents, not in desktop. So, 
Mi te zis prânzis, mă, dar nu mai zic pe bisic. Să te zic, mă, nu te zic de asta. Without talking from the web, 
because otherwise you become very slow. Today nobody goes to a library. Today the engineer searches on the web and the finds the information on the web. I told you that I made an exercise with my tutorials, everything was found on the web. I didn't put anything from books, anything from... So this is a need that you have to learn. So if you feel that you get confused with Google, with the results of Google, try to get skilled in it, because it's extremely important. Okay, now the full path. What is the path of the desktop, for instance? We say on the desktop, what is the path of the desktop? This is a good question. And it is especially difficult in Windows. In Mac and Linux it's much easier. But in Windows, Windows is very complicated with the path. And sometimes you get lost, like you got lost at the beginning, because you save in documents, but it was another document directory. Windows has several documents directories, and it's not easy to get oriented. So I give you the solution for Windows. You have to open a file manager. The file manager, uh, I don't remember how it's named. Let's see here in accessories. And uh, I think it's the resources of the system or something like that. Resources management. Okay, I think it's let me see. You can understand that I'm not very used with the Windows, but I think I missed it. Let me let me. I was called, which I, I don't I can't remember. Okay, here it is. So this is uh, computer management and uh, Okay, now, now we have to find the desktop where it is. Uh, our purpose is to find the path of the desktop. So I go to Denti, Alberto Montanari, desktop. 
This is my desktop where I should find the file that I saved. I didn't save any file on the desktop, but you saved it. And uh, in order to let me, in order to get your situation, let me, let me, my file. Let me save the file on the desktop.
Okay, I save it. I don't do anything, I just go to R and upload. Let's see what happens. Okay, it had eight items, but let's try to see. Uh, I think I changed the wrong file because I don't see anything here. Let me, let me check it is on the desk. Just one second. Ah, okay, I didn't change the module on the desk, I'm sorry. Now I'm changing the one on the desktop. Let me try to upload it. Again. Let me try to do this. I'm not sure I saved it, just one second. succeeded. You see that I got an error. Error is scan. And it explains to you what is the error. Okay, fine. So let me go back to one part and let's do what I suggested you to do. Change, substitute, substitute, commas with dots. Substitute whole Okay, let's save it. Now let's go back in R. Now it seems that it's fine. In fact, you see that now I see fractional numbers. Is this clear? So at this stage, if this is clear, we are able to upload whatever you want. Let's stop here. You don't need to do anything. If you feel excited and you are really motivated, I suggest you to play with that a little bit, just to try to expand your... And then, in two weeks from today, I propose you an exercise. Okay. Good. Thank you.